Joining me now for more on this new COVID plan, Health and Human Services Secretary Javier Becerra. Mr. Secretary, welcome back to Meet the Press Daily. Good to be with you, Chuck. Let me start with uh, what we should view this plan as being. And is this a way of essentially saying the national emergency is over? It's a way of saying, America, thank you. Shout out to everyone who vaxxed, who got boosted, who wore masks, who got tested. Thank you for letting us get to this point where we know we're in a better place. We can let people now move forward, go back to work, get to school, continue to be safe. But thank you. You know, it's interesting. If you look at the data today and you compare it to a year ago, not a lot's changed. We have about 60,000 daily cases today. It was 68,000 a year ago. A little under 2,000 deaths today a day. It was a little over 2,000 a year ago. We had 50,000 in the hospital 56, uh, a year ago, 56, uh, 50,000 today, 56,000 a year ago. You see where I'm going here. Obviously, the biggest difference is fully vaccinated, 215 million versus 30 million. And I guess is, is outside of the vaccinations, if we still had those stats, would we still be in an emergency? Well, I, I would hope that any time that you're losing more than 2,000 Americans a day, when you've got tens of thousands of Americans who are still getting infected and several thousand who are in a hospital because of a particular uh, disease, that we would say this is serious. And that's where we are. We, it, it is, even though it's a tale of, of numbers that almost look the same, it's a yeah. far different place. And it is mostly because of the vaccination. You know, can we really move beyond masks until everybody can get vaccinated? Is it fair to say that the mask mandate on planes, the mask mandate in, in sort of the uh, on federal public transportation trains, we got, we're going to keep it until everybody from infant forward can get vaccinated? Chuck, it's, it's, it's more, it, it, this is not a light switch. You just can't go on and off. Uh, it's a matter of doing this, knowing the science, being thoughtful about how we do this. You know, you, there will be people who will continue to wear masks. Some have to. The, those who are immunocompromised are f under five year, uh, years of age. Children still aren't vaccinated. And so right. we still have reason to be cautious. But look, we're in a different place today and we can move forward and we know what it takes. And we're putting the tools together. That medicine right. cabinet is a lot more full. Who will make that call that if the mask mandate expires on federal public transportation, I think in about three weeks? Will that likely get renewed and extended uh, for a period of time for sure, or is that up in the air? Uh, CDC will continue to take a look at what uh, all the information is. Again, we'll take all the elements, put them together, be thoughtful. Uh, we'll consult with the, uh, the experts. At the end of the day, the president made it very clear. We're going to follow the science. We're going to urge everyone to be not just thoughtful, but responsible, and then we'll move forward. Do the scientists tell you that we should expect this to be seasonal? that we will, you know, we will have peaks. If you look at the last two years, it felt like the South was where we get hit hard in the summer. The North is where we'd get, hard, get hit hard in the winter. Is that a pattern scientists are telling you to prepare for this year? There, there are some real clear patterns, Chuck. Uh, you're not vaccinated, you're more likely to, way more likely to end up mm -hmm. in a hospital, way more likely to die. Uh, winter? Just like with the flu, you're going to see more cases because it's a virus and it it proliferates more during cold seasons when we tend to huddle together in, in spots that aren't as ventilated. So the patterns are there. That's why we can know how to treat this, how to move forward, because the patterns are there. And now, as I said, we got a toolbox and a medicine cabinet that are far more equipped. Is it fair to say we're now in an endemic because we got we're living living with COVID is our version of defeating it? What's fair to say is that Americans, uh, we owe you a great deal of gratitude for vaccinating, for following the guidance, uh, and we'll continue to do that because we want to get back to a place of normality. Thank you for what you're doing to help us get, get back to that spot. Hey, look, I, I get what you're saying. You do not want to be caught saying we're going to have to learn to live with COVID. We're, you're you know, not there I, yet. If uh, I've got staff who've got kids that are under five years of age. Right. What do I say to them? I, you, you know, let's, let's all be cautious. Let's be responsible. Chuck, it's, it's not rocket science anymore. The rocket scientists or the uh, disease scientists are doing right. all they have to do. We know what we have to do. Let's do it. Let's be responsible. The biggest uh, reason we may have gotten that last variant is how under vaccinated the world is. We have talked about vaccinating more of the world. 
but it feels like that progress has been kind of slow. What, what's your explanation of why this has been difficult to get to speed up vaccinating the world? The president said it last night, and the president walked his talk on vaccinating not just Americans, but helping get the world vaccinated. We've done more than any other country, four times more, in fact, than any other country. Uh, and we will continue to do it because we understand that for Americans to be safe, everyone in the world has to be safe because those variants travel and they travel very fast. So we're going to do what we have to do. And we're going to urge uh, our brethren around the world to, to join us uh, this week. I'm holding a ministerial with my counterparts, uh, health ministers, mm -hmm. to talk about this more in preparation for the president's global summit to follow up last year's summit so we can all be prepared to handle not just COVID, but any pandemic and know how to respond. Uh, and finally, just to wrap this up, you brought up the immunocompromise. I brought up the folks under five. I get, is it folks should prepare that until we get, until everybody can get vaccinated, we're likely to have some national uh, areas where we all have to wear masks, airplanes, trains, or is that still not a decision that's going to be made yet? Again, that's the part of being thoughtful about how we do this. But Chuck, I'll pose it back to you and your audience. Uh, if you know, if you have someone in your family who's got a four-year-old, right. is it up to you to help that four-year-old and your, your relative, the parents of that child, to be safe? I think all of us have a responsibility. It's not fair for those of us who think we're through to yeah. say it's all good, spike the ball in the end zone. No, we, we've got family. We've got an American family to take care of. Javier Becerra, uh, Health and Human Services Secretary. Appreciate you coming on uh, Thanks, and uh, sharing your views on this new plan. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you.